Hello and welcome to this week's video. I'm so excited to be sharing with you 13 must-have essentials for starting medical school. I use the things on this list every single day. If you're new here, my name is Maggie. I'm 26 years old and I'm a first year medical student. I started three months ago and as you can maybe see from my background, I, I bought a lot of things before I started med school. But this list of things are things that I use all the time. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing that I already use a lot in med school is our stethoscope. And we actually didn't have to buy these because we got them donated to us and we got them during our white coat ceremony. Um, so that was super nice. But what I use this currently for is, so we have standardized patients every Wednesday. We learn how to interview them and we learn how to do physical exams. So when we're doing the physical exam stuff, every time we need to bring our stethoscope, and so far we've listened to bowel sounds and we take blood pressure with it. Next block is cardio palm, so we'll probably be start listening to um, lung sounds and heart sounds. So haven't used it too much, but definitely already essential to have. And the kind that it is, is Littman Cardiology 4. So like I said, this was bought for us. I think it's a pretty good one. And I'm super grateful that we, the one less thing we had to spend money on to start school. Number two is a laptop. I have, an HP Spectre that I actually got a couple years ago. It's rose gold, if you can tell, yeah. And I absolutely love that it's rose gold. It also does the little flip thing and it's touchscreen. My favorite, favorite part about it is that it's touchscreen. And you could use an iPad maybe instead of a laptop. I would at least have one or the other so that you can download the PowerPoints for a lecture. And the number one thing that I use my laptop for every day is during lecture, I like to make my Anki cards. So I can do the split screen view where on the left side, I have the PowerPoint pulled up that the lecturer is going over. On the right side, I have my Anki stuff. So I'm like copying and pasting and like screenshotting and things like that to make my Anki cards during lecture so that I'm not like, I don't have an eight hour day of lecture and then at 5 p.m. I haven't made any cards and then I go back and try and make cards. No way, I like do it during lecture and I keep up. Otherwise like, yeah, it's just a million times more efficient with that. And this makes it so, so easy. That's why I say like, I don't know if I could use just an iPad and not a laptop because I wouldn't want to make cards on my iPad. I think that'd be kind of a pain because I like the image occlusion and I get, I don't know. I haven't tried it, but let's just say I love doing it on my laptop. Third is a first aid book. So I actually don't have a physical copy. We have PDF versions of the first aid book. And what I use it for, again, is related to my Anki cards. So I keep Anki cards even when our block ends. So the last block we had was GI block. I suspended probably half the cards I made during that block and then kept half so that I can like keep that stuff in long-term memory six months from now. I'm still remembering things from our GI block. But what I use first aid for, since we have that PDF version, I can search words. So when I'm wondering like, oh, like do I need to keep this card long-term or should I suspend it? I'm not really sure. I will take the words, like let's say dyspepsia. I was just doing this yesterday. So that was one of the words. I was like, dyspepsia, is that like relevant to first aid or to step one? Like, I don't know. So I searched it in the PDF version of first aid. I found there was like one thing on it. So I did keep it. And then another card, there was something about radiation proctitis and I searched that word and there was nothing in first aid on it. So I'm like, okay, I'm gonna suspend this card. All right, number four is business casual outfits. So fun story, they told us two days before orientation that we would have to wear business casual the whole week of orientation. <laughs> We were so caught off guard. I don't know where that came from and why it was so last minute, but it was. And luckily I had business casual outfits and I followed two girls on Instagram who started around the same time as me and they were also had to wear business casual. So just go ahead and assume you'll be wearing business casual that first week of med school. And then also throughout the year, you're gonna need it again. So every Wednesday, again, every time we're around patients, we have to wear business casual. And every time we go with our preceptors in the clinic or in the hospital, we wear business casual. So super important to have, you're always gonna be, I, I was actually pretty surprised how often we wear it. Um, so definitely a must have for medical school. I'll show you my two favorite business casual outfits now. <laughs> All right, this is favorite outfit number one. I wear this when it's cold out because this is like sweater material. Super cozy, comfy, cute. I get compliments on these pants. Every time I wear them, I love them and they're also comfy. And then these shoes are the only shoes I have because they're black, they match everything, they're cute. 
got them from DSW, and I think even Amazon has similar styles for even cheaper. All right, and if it's not cold out, this is basically what I wear on Wednesdays or with my preceptor. I also have this style shirt in white and tan, so I just mix it, mix and match like with these pants, which feel like joggers, they're amazing. So basically, all you need for good business casual is cute, comfy, affordable. Hence why these are the two outfits I wear like anytime we have to wear business casual. <laughs> all right, five through eight is all related to Anatomy Lab. So every time I go to Anatomy Lab, I wear a cheap pair of scrubs. No, no cute here, no pink, no gold, no like cute like expensive pair because it's just gonna smell like formaldehyde and you only wear it for anatomy lab and like literally doesn't matter what it <laughs> yeah usually i splurge on like cute stuff for but even for me for anatomy lab i got like an ugly 20 dollars pair from amazon and you need some shoes same thing like ones that you don't care about keep them in my locker gloves a box of gloves and a locker for the locker in your anatomy lab all right guys it's time for number nine and this is easily my favorite essential for medical school i'm obsessed with this so my base bag i actually have two base bags but this is the one that i use most often it's the work tote and guys it's so big i don't know if you can like how much you can tell in the video how big it is it's very big but i love it I'm obsessed. It has so many pockets, it's perfect. Obviously, you don't need to splurge on a base bag. I got this as a gift, actually, and I'm very grateful for it. Um, you just need a backpack or a bag that will hold your laptop, water bottle I always have in it. I put my like mask and um, badge to get into our buildings and stuff in the sides and that's really it so like this is what it looks like when we are around a patient so right now like i have my white coat because we usually well, i just keep it with me anytime we're around patients and then like in this little pouch that comes out is when i is where i put my stethoscope and when i'm going to lecture not around a patient i won't have my white coat or stethoscope in there instead i'll put my chargers in here so it's organized and not a bunch of like wires in my bag and disorganizing stuff and then obviously has a place for my iPad and laptop and stuff. I don't know how much you can tell but it's amazing. Highly, highly recommend splurging on a base bag. <laughs> I also have their backpack um, and I love this as well. It's huge. I can fit my big water bottle in it. In my uh, work tote I usually put my smaller water, water bottle in it but this fits like easily in these side pockets. Anyway, you just need a backpack, okay? You don't need a splurge on face bags, but I love them so much. Okay, number 10 is a coffee maker. You do not need to go to the coffee shop every day. You will waste so much money. Splurge it out on an espresso machine and down the road, you'll save money on coffee later. So I have three ways to get my caffeine. It's the cheapest way versus going to like a coffee shop bulk Celsius on Amazon because it's way cheaper to buy in bulk like that. And then for coffee, obviously my espresso machine and George has this thing where I can make iced coffee. So those are my three options and like that saves so much money. Like don't go to a coffee shop every day, but also you're gonna want a lot of caffeine when you're in med school probably, unless you don't drink coffee or tea, then maybe you don't. But um, I'm sure a lot of you watching this will and I highly recommend even just like a, t we also have like one of those cheap $20 um, coffee pots, you know? So don't, don't buy coffee every day. It's a waste of money. Um, that's definitely uh, essential for me is having those ways to have my caffeine daily <laughs> or more than once even. All right, 11 is my study space. So I, I didn't go overboard. I'm very happy with my study space, but you don't need to get like this big of a setup. Like I have the whole L desk thing. I got the big whiteboard. So what I would say is essential for like a really nice study space because you're going to spend a lot of time in it. Three things, a comfy chair. I love this chair, love, love, love. Um, George's mom, I w we spent two weeks at their house and I was like working in their office and she had this chair and it was so comfy. So I got the same one for me. So comfy chair, a desk, it doesn't need to be a gigantic L desk, but like a desk with enough space, you know, I'm always having like multiple things like all over the place. It looks like a mess at the end of the day. And three, whiteboard, you don't need a huge whiteboard. I do love this, but one thing that I have that I love, are these mini whiteboards because I love love, love to like draw out structures. As you can see, there's the colon. I love to draw out structures. So you don't need a huge whiteboard to do that. You could easily like um, do it on here and like quiz yourself while you're studying on your Anki cards or like, I love, I love whiteboards. I love having this. So study space. 
You don't need everything to have an amazing study space, but definitely desk, whiteboard, and comfy chair. Okay, 12 and 13, these are like the base bag. I am obsessed with my iPad and my iMac. Okay, you don't need these things, because they're expensive, right? You don't need these for med school, but for me, it's absolutely a must-have essential. I'm so happy I got it, and I would do it all over again, because I'm obsessed. Specifically, when I'm making cards, so I make a lot of cards during lecture, but every once in a while, I'm making cards. Specifically on Fridays, when I'm doing my pre-work for the next week, I'm making cards based on sketchy videos I watch. Actually, most of those I unsuspend pre-made cards, but still, I like making my own cards a lot. Um, so even though I do a lot of pre-made cards, I'm still making my own cards on Fridays too from pre-work videos that we watch, things like that. I can, it's crazy, like I can copy something on my iPad and paste it on my iMac because obviously I'm making my cards on my iMac when I'm here Fridays doing my pre-work and yeah, I might have like pictures pulled up or like whatever so I can draw on it and stuff and then I'll take a screenshot and then just click like copy and it comes up on my iMac. So I love that because I can't draw things on my iMac. I, it's good, nice to draw them on here, but then like I want it on my iMac because that's where I make my cards. And I love my iPad because I love notability. I love draw, like writing on the PowerPoints. We have a lot of active learning activities. So sometimes they'll give us a packet where like instead of having a printed copy and losing it later, like it's always like organized here. I can go to whatever block or day we did that and like the whatever active learning event, I have all the answers that I wrote out and love my iPad. The iMac is amazing. The quality of my cam webcam for Zoom calls is insane. I'm also sitting in front of a uh, window, so it's so, so good. Okay, it's already starting to get dark outside, so not even the best lighting. And look at it's wild, right? <laughs> and it's pink. <laughs> like, obviously I love it because of that too. I just love these things. No, like, don't feel like you have to splurge. Like, but like I said, I saved up a lot of money as a nanny. I wanted a sweet setup, and these are my favorite, favorite things that I use every single day. All right, guys, that wraps up this video. I hope this was really helpful for you to see what I use daily as a first year medical student and what I don't. Like, I personally thought I would have more textbooks as a med student, and I am considering actually getting Netter's anatomy book or some anatomy book. But other than that, like, some of our professors like give us a list of required books, and like, I never get. Them. What would I use them for? I don't want to read like you have a million videos on the internet I'm not getting textbooks and I don't think that like, you know, I do fine without them kind of thing So things like that there are probably more that I assumed that I would like need in med school But there's really not a ton of essential things. These are the things that I use almost every day things that I'm obviously obsessed with and uh, Hopefully it was helpful for you to figure out what you need to get so be sure to like, subscribe, follow along on Instagram, and I will see you in the next video.